Mina, Gon Bonwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, back with more Job. We're in chapter 34 tonight, and Elihu is still talking to Job and his friends. And this, what he says here, I think this is a really tough pill to swallow. This is some very harsh truth, and it's some very important truth. Are you ready? You ready to dive in? Whew! I mean, this kind of hit me square between the eyes. Um, so, let, without further ado, let's go. Job chapter 34, starting in verse 31. Again, Elihu is speaking to Job and his friends. For has anyone said to God, I have borne chastening, I will offend no more. Teach me what I do not see. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Should he repay it according to your terms, just because you disavow it? You must choose and not I. Therefore, speak what you know. So to break this down a little bit, this is someone talking to God, just anybody saying, I've borne chastening. You know, I've, I've, been, I've been hurt. I have been judged by you, God. I've, I've been beat up. Um, and I, so I'm not going to offend anymore. I'm not going to sin anymore. Teach me what I don't see. Teach me what I don't know. Teach me what I've done wrong. And if I've done iniquity, I won't do it anymore. Now, on the surface, that sounds very, very reasonable, right? And in fact, I wouldn't even say that's a bad thing to say to God. It's not. Um, I think that is a proper attitude to have towards God. What then is the rebuke? Should he, that is God, repay it according to your terms? You see, with that first statement there saying, God, I've sinned, I'm going to stop it, teach me what I don't know, and whatever I've done wrong, I'm not going to do anymore. The problem within that statement is... Okay, God, I'll stop sinning. Could you please stop the judgment? Could you please stop, you know, making making me hurt? Can you please stop hurting me for the sin that I've committed? Can you stop the consequences of what I've set in motion? Can you stop the bad things from coming my way? Now, he is a very merciful God, and he certainly can. But what if he chooses not? To. What if he doesn't repay your sin according to your terms, just because you disavow it, just because you say, I'm not going to do it anymore? Just be, and he, if you have genuine repentance, does that mean God's going to do it according to your terms? He's going to do it according to his terms. He's going to do it according to his way. God wasn't wrong to let Job go through the sufferings that he went through. God's righteousness truthfully is not in question here. As the God of the universe, he is absolutely just. He's absolutely in control. He can do what he wants, but since he's a God of love, what he wants is for us to come to repentance, and he wants us to understand that there is responsibility and consequences for our sin. If he chooses to be merciful and get rid of those consequences, then that's awesome, that's great. But you can't wheel and deal with God and say, well, I'm not going to do it anymore, so could you lay off, could you stop? At that point, your heart's not even in the right place. Your heart should be, God, I've sinned, I won't do it anymore. In fact, if it pleases you, hurt me some more. Judge me some more so that I will definitely not do this again. Again, that is a hard pill to swallow. That is very, very difficult. But he's not going to, he's not just going to, you're not going to make a deal with him. You're not going to wheel and deal with God. You're not going to ask him, you know, to do things on your terms. He's God. He's the master. He's the potter. You're the clay. You're the servant. You're the slave. If God says, you do this, you do it. And you ask how long to do it. If God says this is what he wants done, you unquestioningly do that. He holds your life and your soul in his hand. And it is because of his mercy and his grace on you, a sinner, that you aren't plunged into hell at this very moment. We need to know our place before God. He is a loving, wonderful kind friend. He is also a holy, sovereign, just king. He's both, not one or the other. And he will judge sin and mete out consequences 
and testing, like Job was tested based on his terms, not on our terms, and not on the devil's terms either. When Satan asked God, you know, hey, or actually, I, I, I said that wrong. Satan is, God's the one who asked Satan, hey, have you seen, considered my servant Job? Now, Job probably would have done something to Job if he could have, but he couldn't, because God had a hedge of protection around him. He, he probably would have wanted to say, hey, God, can I, can I mess with that guy there? I, I don't like him very much. Um, he didn't. He saw the hedge of protection. He couldn't do anything. When God asked the question, then Satan moved. And God is not wrong to test his servants. Just saying that is a little scary to me. All of this message is actually a bit scary to me. Because I've certainly done, you know, I've committed sins. I've done things that are wrong. And I've had a lot of mercy. I have not been judged according to the weight of my sins. I have not gotten what I have deserved. Not in this life. And I know heaven awaits me due to the blood of Jesus. I won't get in the life to come what I deserve either. I've received mercy. And I'm so gracious. And to think that judgment could come heavily and hot and hard is a terrifying thought. The fact that I can't wheel and deal and talk my way out of it is a scary thing. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And we need to remember that. So guys, no wheeling and dealing with God. We serve Him on His terms. We obey Him when He says it. And when we sin, we repent. And... Whatever God says, not what Satan says, and not what our fellow man says, and not, not our opinion, not what we say, what God says, those are the consequences. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.